There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shores. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look into his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look into his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day, glorious day, that will be. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I wanted to start this video with a hymn. Brothers and sisters in Christ, make sure you've got a little booklet where you're putting a lot of hymns down. I'm doing your best to memorize some hymns, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we're going to talk about a question that a sister in Christ had for me and wanted me to do, and I wanted to do that. But I wanted to encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to stay in hymns and sing in hymns. Okay? Hymns and uh, psalms and hymns. The other thing, because you're going to see it up here, I left the pile here. I collect things from the beach. I go down to the beach and walk and uh, sea glass. I don't know if you can really tell, but sea glass. Um, sometimes I collect rocks that look weird, like a whole chunk of the rocks missing. Um, sometimes uh, seashells. Sometimes the blue ones that are very blue. Sometimes the white ones that are very smooth and they feel like chalk, but these are bones. This one's a bone from a sea animal, and then some of these are shells, seashells. But the whole point is, is when I go to the beach to talk with the Lord, I take with me the scriptures. This is Christ. And one of the things I've been saying in a lot of my videos and a lot of my comments is that I've been really pushing in these last days, but this is Christ, are you staying in the Word of God? Everywhere you go, you're making sure that you're, you can listen to Alexander Scorby. While you work, you can listen to Alexander Scorby when you're sitting outside. Okay? When you go for walks, you can take and make yourself... These are memory scriptures that help me memorize scripture. Okay? One's a packet for the salvation verses, and one's a packet for uh, key scriptures that every Christian should know. And I slowly add it to it, add it to it, and it gets thicker and thicker. This stuff starts falling apart to the point where I've got to rewrite, the, redo a whole new pack. I'll do a whole new pack of memory verses. But brother, says Christ, make sure that you're st staying in prayer. You're staying and singing hymns. You're staying in the Word of God, brother, says Christ. Okay? That's my big encouragement to you, that no matter what you're doing, what kind of work you're doing with your hands, which we're about to talk about here, um, that you're still praising God in your heart and on your lips. Okay. Whether it's in hymns, whether it's in prayer, whether it's in taking his word, memorizing it, and hiding it in his, your heart, and living it. Okay. So let's get to today, working with our hands. Okay. A uh, sister in Christ asked me how um, uh, chicken feed, um, I want to make sure I'm using the right words, but if I'm not, forgive me. Uh, basically, you water it down, and it uh, adds good minerals to it as it ferments. It's a fermentation process with the chick feed, and it swells the food up a little bit, 
and makes the food go longer. It lasts longer. You don't have to feed them as much. Um, and they tend to eat it on the spot versus leaving it out there and anything can get to it because I don't know if we're going to get to see it in the video, but I'll try to keep some videos. I've got 20 doves in my, in my back area here where the chickens are and when I put stuff on the ground, if the chickens don't eat it on the spot, those doves will eat it. All the birds come in and try to eat it. Uh, i got chipmunks and squirrels that kind of come in and try to eat it. But I wanted to explain what, what kind of foods that I uh, feed my chickens. Okay, because that was the question about good food to feed the chickens. So here I've got what's called uh, scratch and grains. And it's just scratch and grains. And I'm going to show you, and we're going to leave here, we're going to go outside, I'm going to try to do some videos and then try to auto put my audio over it and talk over the video and explain what I'm doing. But I'm taking this scratch right here and you're filling it up with water and you let it soak in water and it usually soaks for uh, three days to seven days, but three days is the minimum days. And if you can get three buckets in a row and you get them filled up, when you get done with one bucket, you take the next bucket, you fill that bucket up, let it set for three days, and you go through these buckets. And um, the bigger the bucket, the longer you can go. All right. But we're going to get into this. But this is the number one thing that you do. And sometimes if you can get it local, if there's some way to get this local, get it local. Right. Always get your food for your animals local if it's possible. Okay. I have to buy this from a, um, it's almost like a farm store. Okay. It's called Del Kerr. And uh, it's a big red barn. <laughs> so that's where I try to get my scratch and grains from. Um, the other thing we have here, it's called um, egg laying pellets. And you look, it almost looks like <laughs> the pellets for a wood stove. It really does. It just looks like the pellets for the wood stove. Um, I kind of stopped, I, I don't feed mine this, this much anymore. I still have bags because I haven't gone through them because I'm just barely putting it out there. Used to, used to, they were told when I first started, you take this and you mix it with this and you mix it good together and then you put it in the container that you'll see in the video that hangs and it feeds the chickens. And that way when they're getting the scratch, they'll eat this. Well, I've been watching videos and I don't know how credible it is. All I can know is my experience. When I was doing a lot of this, I was getting very little eggs compared to when I cut this out, almost completely cut this out and just stuck with this and watering it down to fermenting it and doing wet food. I've, out of five hens, I've been getting three to four eggs a day. When I was doing this stuff, I'd get two eggs a day. I'm almost getting twice the eggs by cutting this out. And I'm not saying it's the fermentation process because I'd still do dry food and I do the wet food. I do a little bit of both. And then in the evenings, I let them out for an hour to an hour and a half before dusk and let them go hunt down worms. You're supposed to do it in the mornings, but I do it in the evenings. And they go, and there's a lot of places where they can still hunt down worms and bugs and stuff like that. And then they automatically go back to the coop knowing that, hey, it's getting dark. The sun's going down. I got to get back to where I sleep. And they, they know in their heads where they sleep. And we'll see that in the video. Okay. But we're told that you're supposed to mix these two. Well... I was told they're putting stuff in here that's actually hurting the chickens in the sense it's hindering their ability to um, lay eggs. This is supposed to make them want to lay eggs and this is supposed to increase the eggs, like guaranteeing at least one egg a day. But it's actually hindering. It's what I, in my experience, I'm just going off my experience. I can't, you can't quote me on this. It could be some other outside source, but when I cut this out, brother says Christ, I got more eggs. So this I don't use as much, but I wanted to show you what it was because some people still do. And you, you know, if you do, you do. Uh, you might have different experiences. But this is mainly what you focus on. It's called chicken scratch. Scratching grains, scratching grains. Okay. Another thing that I feed my chickens is what's called uh, leftovers. Okay. Right now i got eggshells in here. You can use eggshells in the garden, which is great. But I put everything in here that has to do with leftovers. That's all I got right now for the video. But sometimes I got vegetables left over in here. Sometimes I got rice. They love the rice, leftover rice. Um, because I'm trying to cut down a little bit of my carb intake. So even though the rice cooker, in order to cook the rice great, I have to cook a certain amount of rice. It's like a bowl. And I'm like trying to do half a bowl. And so anytime I do rice, the chickens get, get to have some rice. But all your leftover foods go in here. And you can feed them this. And there's a little corner over in the backyard area where they know that when I come out carrying this, 
that I'm going to dump it in that corner and they're going to just sift through it and eat whatever they want to eat out of it. Um, so this is what I feed my chickens. Okay, Leftover uh, vegetables, fruit, uh, eggshells, uh, rice, uh, bread. Like if I drop bread on the ground, you, your first, my first initial habit, Brother Christ, was to just throw it away in the, the sink or throw it away in the garbage. I had to get in the habit of any time I drop food uh, and stuff like that, and any time you had leftover food or something like that, you, you put it in here <laughs> and give it to the chickens, give it to the chickens. Um, I don't go out to eat that much anymore, and when I do, there's a lot of mom and pop stores that use local meat and local food, which is great. Um, I learned to take my leftovers. Most people just leave it there and walk away. When I had chickens, I was like, I take my leftovers. Um, I got to have, uh, there's a lot of times I get to have lunch with my mom and dad when they come into town, which is rare, but when they do, there's three of us, and if there's leftovers on all our plates, uh, I grab all that leftovers, and I put it in a, I ask for a to-go box, and I take it, and I give it to the chickens, okay? Um, usually it's breakfast stuff, like hash browns and eggs that don't get eaten and stuff like that. Um, and if you're worried, if they get into this, it doesn't make it to my garden and they get it on accident, they're not going to eat the eggs that they lay. Okay, you can, there's possible, I've heard stories, it hasn't happened to me yet, praise God, that chickens can get to the point where they go crazy and eat their own eggs. They have, I haven't seen chickens eat their own eggs just to eat their own eggs. What happens, what I've seen happen, is they're fighting over a coop because I've got three on top and th uh, not the coop but the egg laying box. There's a box I built into the coop. They're egg laying boxes. There's three on top and there's three on the bottom and they tend to like the top versus the bottom but I made some extras for them just in case. But they like to fight over the top ones and sometimes they can get into a fight and if there's three or four eggs like if I don't collect the eggs like I go a couple days and there gets the three or four eggs in one spot if they get to fighting over a spot, they can accidentally break an egg. And if they accidentally break the egg, they're going to eat most of it and clean it up, you know. Uh, but they didn't purposely destroy the egg to eat it, okay. It was an accident. So they, don't, they won't eat the eggs. But they'll eat, the eggshells are good for them. Um, but like I said, leftover food is what I feed them, all right. Now this is what I use to train them. Like I said, this video is mainly for a sister in Christ who wanted this video, but I wanted to share it with the brethren as a whole. Okay, These are called mealworms. I don't know if they have any value whatsoever when it comes to like vitamins and minerals and stuff like that, intrinsic value for the chickens. But it's like a, it's a dried worm, and it's like a bug, and this they love. It's like a treat. And what I do with this stuff, brother says Christ, is I use this to train them. If I let them out too early and they start getting a little too out of control on the hillside or start straying too far off of my property into another property a little bit, I can sit out there, and if I can do it this evening and add it to this video, I'll try. I can sit out there, Brother Sister Christ, and I can do a chicken call, okay? And they know my voice, and they know that when I do calls, I give them treats. And I can sit back in the, in the fenced-in area, and I can do a call, and boy, here they come. They come a-running. And they come running in, and I give them this food, and I can close the gate, and they're, they're safe in the fenced-in areas. So I have, some people have two, I have three areas. I have where the chicken coop is, and it's within a cage, so they have a little bit of walking around space with the chicken coop. Then I have a back area that's beside the house and the hillside, because I'm on the mountainside. By the hillside, there's a long strip beside, between the house and the hillside that I've fenced in, and then I can let them out there during the day. And they can be out there and be just fine for the most part. I still have problems with bobcats sometimes coming in and still taking. Bobcats can climb fences. But, um, but they can be out there for most of the day. And then in the evening, like an hour or two before dusk, I'll open the gate and let them out on the property. Sometimes they'll go down the hillside. Sometimes they go up the, the driveway a little bit. And like I said, if they get too far away or if I look and say, okay, they've been out for an hour and I'm just a little worried or if I just want to... I want to call it an early night, and I want them back in the, in the fenced-in area, I can use this to train them, and I have. And I, I start with my baby chicks and get them really into this where they love it, and they get used to me, so when I make the noise and give them these, these things, I start them out young, okay? And then they're teenagers, and they all come running with their little teenagers. Um, uh, Sister in Christ was asking that last batch of chickens that I had, um, sorry for saying I'm blood. Uh, the last batch of ch chickens I had, uh, a lot of roosters, so I only got two hens out of it, and one hen didn't make it. 
um, something happened, she got crushed, something happened, and she could move her neck around, but she couldn't move the rest of her body. And so I, I got one hen, I'm hoping I got one hen out of eight chicks last time. So I started a whole new batch of chicks, okay, and I'll show a picture of that. Um, and there, I bought these. I didn't hatch them myself. I have an incubator over here. I didn't hatch them myself. I bought them. So they're supposed to be hens, guaranteed hens. There's a way to look at the feathers once they get all fuzzy and everything. You look at the wings, not the feathers, the wings. There's little tiny feathers on the tips of the wings. And that's what you look at. And there's a way to tell if it's all uniform. It's supposed to be like a hen. If it's if the, if the little tiny feathers that are sticking out of the wings, it's short, long, short, long, short, long. Like every other one is short and every other one's long. That's the rooster. Um, and I'm still trying to learn these things. So I'm going to try to do some hens. Okay? But I wanted to show you what this looks like with all the different stuff. For the most part, this is what I feed them. Okay, if anything, this is what I feed them. Okay? And then, like I said, one thing I didn't say, you can do rocks put big rocks in areas in the back, in, in, in an area back there. I have a huge log back there and I push it into the ground and everything and once a week you can go back there and you can lift the log form or you can lift some rocks form or like square bricks. You can lift them up form and it collimates a lot of, um, if I use the right word, but it causes a lot of roly polies and bugs and worms to be right underneath. So that's a good treat form too, that you can go out there and lift a log over, lift a rock over, and just let them go at it. And they'll just grab every kind of bug there is. Pardon me. Bugs are good for chickens. Bugs are very good for chickens. They get their food naturally with bugs and worms and stuff like that. It's really good for the chickens. So that being said, I just wanted to do a beginning video to explain everything. And now we're going to do some video where I'm going to go out there and you're just going to see me how I do the food. Mixing the water with the food. Remember to let it set for three days. Minimum. And like I said, if you have a few uh, five gallon buckets, you can trade off. So when one bucket gets empty, you bring it and you fill it up and set there so it can set there for three days. And you grab the next bucket. And by the time you get to that third bucket again, it's been sitting there for three days. And it's just a rotation. You've got to work on a rotation. And um, one thing I need to say here is if you're going to go to wet food completely, which is great if you want to, you buy these trays. There's these trays where you can make your own trays or bowls and you pick a time of the day where you feed them and you call them in and you feed them and you just feed them that. And they tend to eat the food on the spot because they're hungry. There's no food. You don't leave food out for them anymore. You just feed them once a day at a specific time and you train them to come at a call, which is what I do with the mealworms. You train them to come in with a call and you feed them at one time during the day and they tend to eat most of the food on the spot. It's wet food. They'll eat it on the spot. And then they'll go back to their foraging in the morning for worms and bugs and foraging in the afternoon to evening for, for bugs. And that's the way you can get them off dry food completely. I still use a little bit of dry food. Um, but eventually, I'll probably get them to just wet food completely. So, Brothers Sisters Christ, mainly for that sister in Christ, um, uh, thank you for that letter. I want to say it again. Thank you for the letter. Sometimes, Brothers Sisters Christ, I still get letters in the mail, in the P.O. box for the ministry, and it is such a blessing to get a letter from a brother or sister in Christ. Thank you for that letter again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But let's head outside and let's see this stuff get put into practice. Okay, you get two empty buckets. You get one, but try to get three of them. And five gallons, and we're going to fill these guys up with chicken scratch. And when you get chicken scratch in there, and as we're going through this, I have to apologize for my jeans. I have one pair of good jeans, and my grandfather always taught me to look pre presentable when you go into town. So I've got one good pair of jeans that I wear for going into town, and a lot of my jeans for around here are starting to look like those jeans. <laughs> So, as we fill these up, brothers and sisters in Christ, mainly for the sister in Christ that wanted, had some questions about it, you fill it all the way up, you're going to see bubbles, and these are air pockets, and then once you let it set for about an hour, you want to shake these up at least uh, once a day. Um, I prefer twice a day, if you can get out there in the mornings, and you sh you'll see with me, I'm going to shake them up real quick. 
and it's going to loosen everything up and you're going to see bubbles come up. But when you start shaking it once or twice a day and you get to day three, usually like three days is a good amount of day to let it set before you can start using it minimum. Or you can let it set a little bit longer if you want to. But when you start shaking it up, bubbles start coming up. And a lot of bubbles will start coming up when, when, then by the third day to let you know that the fermentation process is working. Okay. So you let it set for, for three days. And once you let it set for three days, you can use it. And it's good. Some people let it set for a little bit longer. Um, but also another warning with those buckets real quick, as you fill them up, uh, they might start uh, swelling up the water and you might have to fill them up more. So fill them up three-fourths of the way and then fill, up the, fill the bucket up with 90% of water. What you're looking at here is um, the log I was talking about. There's a worm right there. You can put stones, you can put logs down, and like I said, once they set there for a week, uh, you can pick different ones and lift them up for the chickens to um, eat. Have good stuff under. This is what I set up. You can set up, you can use tires. A good thing to use is a tire because it's closer to the ground and you fill it with, with dirt uh, or sand, some kind of a, a, a thin powder kind of dirt so the chickens can do their dirt baths. So this is one of the spots I've seen chickens up there. I'm moving it around because if it gets wet, it gets a little bit clumpy, but if you can move it around, let the sun on it, it'll dry it out and get it more powdery, and they love that stuff. Okay, Brother Sis Christ, this is called a chicken block. I forgot to mention this when we were sitting down and talking, but this is a chicken block, and I showed a picture of it. It's basically a treat for them to have, for them to work on. One warning with these is don't let them get wet. If you let them get wet like mine got a little wet, uh, they break it into pieces really quick and it doesn't last as long as you wanted it to. You want it to last at least two weeks to a month and it will as long as it stays hard and dry. When you have a chicken coop and you have food, you always have rodents and you always have predators. So I just wanted to show a quick live trap of an empty trap and one that I caught a, a, a rat in. And I'm catching rats like every week. So, okay, here we are, Brother Sis Christ. We're about to unleash the chickens. And there they go. Now, real quick, you're going to see my youngest uh, chick come down here in just a few seconds. Gonna come down the ladder. She's the only hen I got from that first batch that I talked about. There she is. She's still very shy because she's all by herself now. She's not with her uh, other chicks that she was with. This is where I do the dry food. And this is where I do some of the uh, pellets. Like I said, I'm trying to get away from the pellets, but I still have pellets left over. I won't buy egg laying pellets anymore, but I have some, so I throw them out there a little bit. But there's the dry food. You can also see Declan up there in the left corner. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, that's inside the coop because when it's raining, I really don't let them outside the coop when it's raining. Okay, here is the little mesh. It's used for cooking, for straining stuff, but I lost the handle on mine, but mine still works just good. But you can get these at for cooking stores uh, at Fred Meyers, at Walmart, and you use it to actually get the soft grains and it strains all the water out. So you're just dropping grains. And like I said, if you want to use the trough, there's a trough there that you can buy or you can build one of your own. And you can fill the trough when it's time to eat and you call them in and they start eating. And here they come. Now since my chickens still do dry food and... Um, they're not going hardcore on it, but if all they ate was this wet food and it was once a day, they'd all be running over and they'd be going crazy all over it. Here in a second, I'm going to move completely back and out of the way and see if we can let's see if we can get some more hens to come running in here. And there they come. I got five full-grown hens, and I've got one of those baby hens coming up. And then I got five baby chicks that are supposed to be hens. So hopefully, I'll end up with eleven hens by the end of summer. That's my prayer, and uh, that's my hope. Okay, remember when I talked to you about giving them table scraps? How do chickens react when you're going to give them table scraps?
Well, let's see how they react when they finally realize I'm down there with a, a bowl of table scraps. Oh, there comes one. There comes another one. There they go. Usually when one of them starts running, they all start running. And they all come running down. Oh, there's the last one. And here they are. All I had for them today was some egg shells. So they, they go crazy over table scraps. I give them all kinds of table scrap food, leftover food, leftover rice, leftover stuff like fish, if I can't eat all my fish. Um, sometimes uh, I'll give them the fish after I've filleted the fish. The, the, there's still some meat on the bones, so I'll just throw the whole fin and head in the backyard, and they'll go crazy over that stuff. They just like the scraps, and that's what's good. It's good for them. Sometimes they'll grab a scrap and they'll chase each other around forever. There's a pecking order, you know, and they do chase each other around for food. Okay, here's the final video, and this one has to do with what I was talking about, the mealworms, where you train them with mealworms. I was fellowshipping with the brother in Christ, and I didn't get them before they came back into the roost. So this is late in the evening. So this isn't going to be as grand as I wanted it to be, because... Normally when they're out on the driveway, when I let them out of this back area for an hour before dusk to run around and look for some worms and stuff like that, I can use this to call them back in to this back area before they go back into the coop. But they already went back in the coop. So one of them heard me calling, and here, here she comes, here comes another one. If my big head wasn't in the way. Here they come. They're just not coming as fast as they normally do. They usually come running when it's in the evenings and I'm trying to get them back in the back area so I can close the gates. And they come running. I want to thank all the brothers and sisters of Christ for their prayers about the chicken coop, about dealing with mites, uh, predators, and trying to get some more hens and, be, and get them back, built back up. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.